And neither of you guys was born here, but you both lived here for a very long time. What do you think it is going to take? Because right now I just walk around LA and it just feels like everyone's kind of shocked. The energy is off, the vibe is off. But, but do you feel, I mean, do you think it's, how, how long is it going to take hurt for people for a while. to feel normal? You know, I, I think one of the fans said it, you know, Kobe is to LA what water is to the human body. <laughs> you know, Kobe is everything. You know, the world lost a superhero, like I said yesterday, a uh, uh, superstar player, but LA lost a superhero. You know, he embodied everything from the player, the man, the father, the businessman, everything that people would strive to be. You know, whether you're playing or you're in business, like his mindset and approach inspired so many more people than just athletes. I mean, looking down at this scene, it reminds me of the 2016 Cavs championship parade. I was riding right. on the back of a float with Kyrie Irving, and he was looking at the expanse of one million plus people right. in downtown Cleveland. And he said, one man can change the world, talking about LeBron. Sure. Damn it, is that ever true when you look at what's happening here Absolutely. in L.A.? Kobe Bryant has changed this city, changed this country, changed the world. Absolutely. And LeBron is one of the few other people who can talk about what that burden feels like, that opportunity feels like to influence so many people. He did take to Instagram his first public comments about Kobe Bryant. And one of the sentences that just stuck out to everyone, Dave, is that he made a promise in that post to carry on Kobe's legacy. He said, it's my responsibility now. What do you think he meant by that? I, I think he's st stepping into the void. And he's saying, I know this city is hurting. I know this organization is hurting. I know individuals in our locker room are hurting. I'm built for this. Follow my lead. And <laughs> not to go back to 2016 Cavs yeah. again, but... Well, you know, it wasn't time. life and death, but it was a dire basketball situation. Down 3-1 mm -hmm. to the greatest regular season team of all time. About to get on a flight to Oakland. And he says, get me game five. I got you the rest of in the game way. seven. Yep. So I think that his message is saying, Laker fans, stay on board. Right. Um, City of Los Angeles, there's going to be some relief coming your way because we're, we're going to give you a, a show to watch and, uh, you know, so you can forget about your troubles a little bit. It is amazing, by the way, when they show that shot of Dave and you see right behind him is these giant screens are all over the plaza. You see Kobe and Gianna looking down on all of us. Matt, what do you think in terms of LeBron and, and his, quote, responsibility that he feels now? I think if anyone could do it, it's him. You know, the way he ended up here. You know, I know he talked to Kobe in that process, and uh, he's always been welcoming. You know, right when LeBron got here, it was the who's who's the greatest, who's this, who's this. Kobe's the greatest Laker. I think everybody knows that, but I think if anyone can take on the challenge of helping heal this city, helping heal this organization, uh, LeBron James, I think, could do that. It's interesting because we had a topic of conversation on our show maybe a month or so ago of who is the greatest Laker, right? And, of course, it's a different thing. The greatest player to ever put on a Laker uniform is probably Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or LeBron James. The greatest Laker was a real split on our set of Magic Johnson versus Kobe Bryant, but Magic Johnson came out immediately uh, the morning that Kobe died saying, this, it's him. Yeah. He is the greatest Laker. He is the one. Well, I think LeBron, I mean, excuse me, I think Kobe's the greatest player and the greatest Laker. You know, being able to battle against him, and that's all due respect to Kareem and to Magic and what they did, but what Kobe took on and embraced, obviously after he won his first three titles with Shaq and the way he had to reinvent himself as a man and as a player to rally these troops up and win two more. And then I came in 2010 and we were going for a three-peat. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, but I think the evolution of Kobe, you know, I, I, I talked to him as if he was ours because came here at 17 as a kid yeah you know what i mean and we watched him grow up from i remember being in my ucla dorm room where he's going to pick finesse up in high school in a lamborghini and helicopters were following him <laughs> you know what i mean so it's all the ups and downs the goods and the bads like we saw him become the superhero in front of our eyes and i think that's why it's so hard for all of these people in la to accept this fact that him and his daughter are gone because like i said he was he was ours all these people behind us dave I, i'm not going to put all of them in the same category but a lot of them probably had some mixed feelings when lebron came and we remember seeing the murals that went up around la because there was sort of kobe and lebron side by side but we saw people xing out they lebron right, that. <laughs> right. Yeah, th that, there man. was and uh, kobe did a lot to change that perception mm -hmm. Um, I think he did a little bit to feed into it before LeBron officially came to the Lakers. Right. <laughs> I remember uh, when the Cavs made the finals in 2018 and beat the Boston Celtics. So there's a lot of talk of 
Jordan and, and LeBron, LeBron being the greatest, and Kobe kind of jumped in that yeah. conversation on Twitter. <laughs> I we remember, Dick, what did he say? He goes, everyone's arguing about whether LeBron, me, or Michael <laughs> yeah, are the greatest. the greatest. And it was sort of like, are people arguing about that? Right. But he, he, that's what he did. And, and he told And Howard that Beck, confidence is right. what we loved about of him. Course. And he, he had a case. Of course he did. No of course he did. He, he's uh, no question a, a, a top 10, if not top 5 player of all time. But he told Howard Beck, you know, when you come to Lakers, you better win championship. Right, yes. But as Before soon as he LeBron put on that number 23 uniform, mm -hmm. everything changed. Right. And he embraced him, and he came to games, and he sat courtside, and he consulted with Rob Palenka trying to help him make this team better. And the way he went above and beyond to really make LeBron feel welcome and special with passing him in the all-time scoring list yes. just this past Saturday, um, he wanted to set the tone for – Lakers fans and teach them how they should embrace this current team. Yeah, I mean, how gracious he was Saturday night. Such a credit to him. And to have that be his last sort of public act, I think, is pretty amazing. So we've been having this conversation about LeBron and what's going to change for him. You had a conversation off camera with one of the favorite players of all three of us sitting here, Mr. Gilbert Arenas. Mm -hmm. And he had kind of interesting comments on that too, right? Yeah, he said, uh, you know, he's become uh, reconnected with Kobe through the AAU circuit or youth basketball circuit. And Kobe had a conversation with him and this is speaks to the impact that Kobe could have on yeah. a number of individuals. And he said, you have so much knowledge mm. with the game. You got to give it back to mm -hmm. the next generation. Keep doing what you're doing with youth basketball, but find an outlet for it. Mm -hmm. And I've known Gilbert for years and I was, you know, DMing him about Kobe's passing. And, and he said, you know, I got to do it. I got to listen to him. No more wild gill. It's time for me to do what the man asked me to do for the game of basketball. And, um, you know, I know Matt knows him really mm -hmm. well. I, I, I'm really excited if that does come to yeah. fruition. Well, as we were talking about off camera, I mean, there's a lot of similarities to their approach and their sickening love for the game yes. and their work ethic. Are both detail. of those guys. Both of them incredible. are so detail -oriented. Gilbert, well, you know, Gilbert had a bad ending to what could have been an amazing career, but as far as his approach and knowing what all the work he put in, very similar. And then you see someone like 50 Cent, who is probably one of the biggest trolls on Instagram. I'm mm -hmm. one of them, too. <laughs> but, you know, him saying that Kobe touched him and there's no more trolling and it's about business now. Like I said, Kobe touched so many more than just athletes. Um, his thought process and his approach to life is, you know, it resonated with everybody. Now, I'm more likely to believe either one of them than I was when I sat across from Joel Embiid a few <laughs> months ago and he said, I'm never going to trash talk again. And that lasted, what, like three weeks? <laughs> I don't expect Gilbert Arenas to change his entire personality, but the idea that he could take something that Kobe said to him with him and having this moment he has a lot be the to offer. thing yeah. that, that sends him forward into just, you know, not, not a slightly opposite path, but a different turn and curve of his path. I think we'll see that with a lot of players, sure. right? And, and the fact that a peer yes. looked up to him, yes. like that says something about Kobe. There was, yep. a, there was something about him, something about his work ethic and his approach that garnered universal respect. Yep. You know, even when Shaq and Kobe weren't getting along, the respect factor was always yeah. there. Well, I mean, that's what you see is, you know, Kobe wasn't a vocal leader. Kobe was do as I do type leader. Like he gave his absolute all, diving on the floor, doing whatever it took, took charges. So it almost made you, if you're, I mean, you see the greatest player doing that. It's like he doesn't have to say anything to you. He'll give you the s -s 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 when he wants the ball. Right. You know, but outside <laughs> of that, you just know if he goes as hard as he can, why in the hell aren't you going as hard as you can? I imagine if you're a Kobe teammate, you hear that s -s -s in uh, your sleep because uh, you hear it so often in, in mm. real life. Dave, thank you so much for joining us. Dave will be with the Lakers for the rest of the week and back here on the jump as well to kind of encapsulate this coverage and the story that keeps on going. Zach Lowe is going to join us next.